everybody, Colby and Brody here, and welcome back to another episode of Life and Law. For today's video, I want to talk about five more things that I wish I knew before starting law school. So without further ado, at number one, it's important to know that law school exams generally only test you on one thing, and that's your common law legal analysis. Now what exactly is common law? Well, it's a legal system that's based on judicial decisions and customs rather than on statutes and enacted laws. This means that when reaching a decision, common law courts typically look to past judicial decisions or legal precedent to guide their decision-making process. As opposed to countries that practice civil or Roman law, what this means for U.S. law students is that law schools find it's not very important to learn black letter rules of law so much as it is to learn how those rules interact and how to interpret those rules. For me, coming into law school, I was under the impression that I would be memorizing a ton of legal doctrine and black letter law and then be tested on my memorization skills in a relatively straightforward way. Instead, I was presented with hypothetical situations that I had to apply legal analysis to based on how past courts ruled in an analogous situation. Now, you can basically do this, theoretically, without even understanding the underlying legal doctrine. You just have to look at the past decision, how they would decide on a situation, and then apply that to the situation that's outlined in your exam. What all of this means is that throughout the semester, instead of memorizing what court decisions are, you're going to be wanting to pay attention to how those courts reached those decisions and what legal analysis they applied to get there. And number two, you'll probably be relieved to hear that you will have time to maintain a social life or engage in your hobbies. I feel like most sources tell you that the only thing you'll have time for in law school is law school. That you'll be eating and breathing and sleeping and dreaming about legal doctrine until you kind of turn into this robotic lawyer. And that's just not the case. Law students are certainly busy throughout the week, but I have yet to meet a fellow student who hasn't had time to go out to the bar on the weekend, or hang out with friends, or even just relax and watch a movie, play video games, or stare at a wall. It's all about striking a balance and finding out what works for you. I personally find that treating law school like a 9 to 5 job typically frees up my evenings so I can do whatever I want. Number three is something that I still struggle with, and that's reading in law school is completely different from anything you've done before. Most people read textbooks and novels like normal human beings, meaning fairly quickly and one time through. While that system works for non-law students, it just won't cut it in law school. You have to treat reading as an opportunity to practice and apply the legal analysis skills you've picked up in the classroom. So this means that I'm constantly having to remind myself to read slowly and deliberately and look up every single word that I don't know. Even when reading at such a slow pace, I still find that I have to read the case at least twice through to understand all the important aspects of the court's opinion. This is why you should never be fooled into thinking you got off easy when a professor only assigns one case for your night's reading. All that means is that you're going to be expected to know that case inside and out and be able to assess every little detail found within the court's opinion. I have easily spent two hours on one case before in a similar situation. Number four is something that might boil down to individual law schools, but I found in general, law schools are not nearly as cutthroat as they're portrayed to be in movies or TV shows. Admittedly, I chose to go to the University of Michigan, which is renowned for the helpfulness and congeniality of its students and staff, so I might not be able to provide the most accurate assessment of other T14 schools, but certainly no one is ripping out pages from textbooks anymore or undermining their fellow classmates in front of the professor to try and get a leg up. Frankly, that type of behavior only serves to set back the offending person. Professors aren't likely to reward behavior that won't take you very far in the workplace, and your fellow students certainly don't appreciate it. Personally, I found my classmates to be an invaluable source for everything from clarifying a confusing aspect of class to providing helpful feedback on my written work. At the end of the day, it's best to remember that professors are paying attention and can recognize bad behavior and will certainly take that into consideration when writing recommendations. And your fellow law students might one day have the power to hire or fire you or at the very least influence that process, so play nice. Finally, at number five, I wish I'd learned some basic terminology before setting foot in a classroom. 
Oftentimes you'll hear that you should never read doctrinal material before you get into the classroom because you might confuse yourself or learn something you don't need to know or learn something entirely wrong. I find that this, like most things, boils down to personal choice and it's helpful for some people and not so helpful for others, but at the very least I'd recommend learning the basic terminology that you'll need to be using in all of your classes. Specifically when reading a case, professors will expect you to be able to identify the case's holding and any reasoning behind it, any legal questions or issues, and the procedural posture of the case. Now, it took me an embarrassing amount of time to understand the definition of a case's holding, or more specifically, the difference between a case's holding and dictum. So all of you can start one step ahead of me. Let me clear it up right now. A case's holding expresses the reasoning necessary to reach the court's decision, and dicta is just all the other legal statements made in the court's opinion. It can be quite confusing because most of the time I find all the statements made by the court are said with equal veracity. So I find the best way to identify the holding is to find the statement that cannot be taken out of the opinion for the decision to still be directly supported. Okay, that wraps up today's video. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get an answer to you as soon as I can. And make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any more new content.